Welcome to another episode of Smoke Meat with Jeff. <clears throat> Today we're going to be making pancetta, or what is known as Italian bacon, and oddly enough, it requires no smoking of the meat at all. In fact, we're not going to cook this thing. Uh, it just takes quite a while for it to uh, to cure. Uh, total total time to make this happen. You're looking at about a month, month and a half or so, uh, before you start uh, cutting into the final product of pancetta or Italian bacon. Just a couple of really basic ingredients uh, and then a lot of time to make this happen. So uh, grab your pork belly, grab your ingredients, and uh, let's get started on this. Basic ingredients. Let's start with the non-food ingredients. You're going to need some sort of container for curing your pork belly in. Uh, I go with a glass container, but you can use a metal uh, cookie tin. Um, but you want to make sure that you have some sort of barrier between the metal and the salt mixture, the cure that we're going to be creating for this. Uh, you're going to need a sharp knife because we are going to be removing the skin from our pork belly. Um, and then you're going to need something to basically press this while it's in the refrigerator. Typically I'm going to put uh, a small plate or something else on top of the, the pork belly and then uh, uh, I don't know, a gallon of milk or orange juice or something like that. Just to put a little bit of pressure on the top of the pork belly while it is curing. So this is going to take about a week to cure, and for that we're going to um, make our cure mixture out of uh, salt. You're going to need about a pound of uh, salt. I go with sea salt, about eight ounces of sugar, and then uh, depending on the instructions for the sodium nitrate or pink salt that you're using, uh, it's usually going to be a couple of ounces to a pound uh, or so of regular salt. So I've got my, my sodium nitrate or pink salt here and I have my cure already mixed up because I did some uh, homemade bacon in one of my other YouTube videos that you can check that out as well. Um, and then of course for your uh, pancetta you're going to need a pork belly of course. Uh, you can get a full size pork belly. I'm just going to be working with a small piece today uh, but you want to make sure that you have as much meat in there as possible. Nothing wrong with fat but I just love the meatiness of this. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna remove the pork skin on the outside here. And then we're gonna start curing it, but we're gonna be seasoning this as well. And then after it's been in the refrigerator for a week to cure, um, we're gonna move on to the second stage where we are gonna wrap it up in some cheesecloth. And you're gonna need some butcher's twine for that step, but we're easily a week away from that. So let's get started on uh, taking some of our spices, which you can spice this any way you want. I'm going to be doing it with some uh, black peppercorns, some coriander, I've got some fennel seeds, and then this, one of my favorites, it's called star anise, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Wonderful little spice. I can't really describe to you what it smells like other than it smells like star anise. So uh, let's get our spice mix together. I've got my cure mixed and ready to go. I'm going to slice off this pork skin and we're going to start curing. Okay, so at this point I have cut the skin off my uh, um, pork belly and it is time to turn our attention to making the spice mix that we're going to do. So I'm just going to do mine real simple with some uh, black peppercorn. I've got my Star anise, start breaking that up. My fennel seeds. And some coriander. Now, you're going to want to really blend this up and, and powder this into a, a nice fine spice mixture. I'm, as you can see, I'm using a mortar and pistol to do that today. You can use a spice grinder. Just make sure you have a dedicated spice grinder. Don't go grab the one that you do your coffee with um, unless you wanted to add coffee as part of your spice mix. But on the flip side, when your significant other goes to use that coffee maker next time, they're going to taste all these other spices in their, uh, their coffee. So I'm just going to grind this up. And then we're going to move to uh, doing our cure and spice mix. Woo! Took a lot of elbow grease, but I've got my spice mix set up here. So now it's just a matter of, uh, let's cure this, uh, this piece of pork belly. So you're going to take your uh, salt, 
sugar and uh, pink salt mix and just line the bottom of uh, whatever dish you're going to be using to cure in. Like I said, I'm using glass. If I was going to be doing this in a uh, metal tray, uh, I put down a, a layer of parchment paper, then a layer of salt so that you don't end up with the salt uh, interacting with the metal. Nice little layer of salt. Take some of your spice mix and put it on top of the salt so that the spices are in between the salt uh, and the pork belly that you're going to be placing in here. Take your pork belly, doesn't matter whether you do it fat side up, fat side down, because you're going to be flipping this thing over about every day or so. Press it down into the, the salt, and then take the other half of your mix, sprinkle it over the top, and make sure that you get these spices, especially on the fat side, because the fat, the, the fat's really going to pull those, those flavors into your uh, pancetta as it cures. So as you can see, nice layer of spices on my pancetta. Take some more of your curing mixture and really cover this thing up. Don't, uh, don't feel that you're putting too much salt onto this thing because you're really not. Okay, nice layer of salt. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I've got a little piece of parchment paper here. I'm going to place it on the top, and then I'm going to go find a small plate or something that will uh, sit on top of this that I can put a jug of uh, uh, milk or orange juice or something heavy on there to kind of press this while it's in the refrigerator. You want this to sit in the refrigerator for at least seven days, flipping it every day, and then, uh, and then we'll come back. So a few seconds for you, full week of uh, babysitting and flipping this thing every day. In the meantime, go out, find yourself some cheesecloth, and get yourself some butcher's twine because we're going to tie this thing up, and then it's going to be uh, hanging in our refrigerator for a number of weeks to finish the curing process. So I'll see you in about a week. Pancetta. Well, here we are a week later with uh, having our... Uh, pork belly in our uh, spices and curing brine here for a week flipping it over every day and of course putting uh, my gallon of milk or juice back on top of this to kind of press this so let's take a look at what we got oh that's looking good as you can see we got a lot of liquid in here all of that liquid came out of the pork itself it's fairly stiff got all of our spices on here so at this stage, uh, what we're going to do is uh, take this into the house, uh, to the sink, and really wash off all of these spices and all of this, uh, this curing, uh, curing salt, and then uh, thoroughly dry the outside of this thing. And then we'll be back and uh, get this ready for the next uh, process, which takes even longer because we're going to hang this thing up to cure for a few weeks in the refrigerator. But you're going to need your cheesecloth and your butcher's twine for this next step. So I'm gonna go ahead inside, make myself a drink, of course, uh, and then uh, get this all rinsed off and ready for the next stage of our process of making pancetta. I am back from the sink. I've got my uh, pork belly uh, all completely rinsed off, got as much of the spices that I could uh, off of the, the slab here and the salt as well. There's a little bit I missed. Uh, so now it's just going to be a matter of uh, getting this thing ready for the aging process. Entirely optional if you want to re-season this or not. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I, I really love my seasoning. Wish you could smell this. It uh, smells awesome. Uh, but for this next stage you're going to need um, your cheesecloth and go ahead and get that laid out before you start uh, rolling this thing up. And you're gonna need your butcher's twine, like this, cut into about one foot lengths. All right, we are all seasoned and ready to go. Now, entirely optional. If you have a, uh, a full-blown pork belly, 
this is a lot easier to roll up and it takes a little bit of muscle to make this happen because this is uh, uh, with aging or getting uh, cured in the refrigerator for the last week it's lot of, uh, lost a lot of its moisture content so it's a, a tougher piece of meat to roll so all you're gonna do is take it and I usually do it with the where the skin side out and just grab it and just really go to work on putting a lot of pressure and rolling this thing up as tight as you can. Like I said, with the full pork belly, it's actually easier to roll up than a little piece like mine. All right, so I have it rolled up nice and tight like that. And then we're gonna put it right onto our cheesecloth, which is of course wider than, uh, than the pork belly itself. And you are just going to pull this as tight as you can and wrap it up. And I've got quite a long piece here because you want a lot of uh, quite a few layers over the pork belly. Ah. Right, so there we go, all rolled up. Take those ends and twist them a little bit to kind of hold it into place. And now that you've got it rolled up in the, uh, in the cheesecloth, it'll hold its shape fairly well. And then you're just gonna take your lengths of butcher twine. I start in the middle. And we are gonna tie this thing as tight as we can get it. Okay, got the first knot on there, like so, and of course we'll we'll trim this. But we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to do uh, a couple more uh, ties on here, and then I'm going to tie off the ends, and then we're ready to let this thing age. And there we have it. <clears throat> My uh, pancetta is all tied up bound and ready for the aging process. You want to make sure that you hang this in the refrigerator. Don't let it sit on a, on a shelf. You want it to hang in there so that you get some good airflow around it to really allow this to, uh, to age and dry out the way that it should. It's nice and tight. Put a loop in it. I'm going to go hang this into my refrigerator and I'll see you in a few seconds, but for me it's going to be about another three weeks before it's time to uh, cut into this bad boy and uh, have ourselves some homemade Pancetta. All right, so we are at my garage refrigerator where I'm going to be hanging this for uh, the next couple of weeks and just want to show you how I'm doing it. Uh, you just want to make sure that your pancetta roll is hanging uh, so that it is loose and you can get good airflow around it, but you also don't want it right in front of the little vents where the blower is in your refrigerator. So let me show you the little setup that I have. As you can see, I've just took a uh, spare piece of stick and it's just friction fit in here. Here's the coolers for running the refrigerator, but I have the pancetta hanging loosely out of the way here off to the side. And we're just gonna let that sit for a number of weeks. Uh, and I'm using the garage fridge because this doesn't get as good opened as uh, often as the, ref uh, the household fridge. So it'll be more consistent moisture in here. So we'll come back in a couple of weeks, pull this out, and see what we've got. Well, it has been a long three weeks. You can feel that it has firmed up quite nicely. Pulled it out of the refrigerator. So let's go ahead and cut this open and see what we've got. Uh, when you cut pancetta, you want to cut it really thin, uh, and then you can use it as a garnish on some salad. I'm going to do a little salad here with a little bit of olive oil, uh, a nice little appetizer dish or you can slice it up, throw it on pizza as a pizza topping, sandwiches, whatever you want to do. So uh, let's cut this open and take a look at the finished product. All right, let's make this happen. Uh, go ahead and the end that you have the string on for hanging it up, you want to cut it at the other end because we'll put this back in the refrigerator and hang it back up for whatever portion we don't use today. But uh, let's take a look at what we've got. Cut right through. Oh boy, 
Look at that. That it's nice and solid, pretty nice and amazing. We can actually pull back a little bit of our cheesecloth here. And let's give this a taste. Remember, cut as thin as you can. Not that thin. That's looking awesome. All right, I'm gonna break off a piece and taste it. Oh my God, that's amazing. I picked the right spices for this one. So this is uh, Jeff with Smoked Meat with Jeff. Give this a shot. It takes a long time to make, but uh, it is worthwhile. Nice homemade pancetta, or pancetta, depending on who you're talking to.